Welcome Cogs. Welcome Mitt. So I started this project because I want to try and bridge the gap between the different levels of humanoid robots there are right now. There are a few open source designs out there, like the InMove, which is a fantastic design, very accessible, and then there are unbelievably lifelike designs like what we see coming out of Disney, and then the kind of ropey, not quite uncanny valley middle ground. My aim is always to shoot for the best combination of realism, biomimicry and quality, while keeping the design affordable, accessible and open source. So with this design I started with the mouth. If you've been here for a while you might remember that I did a mouth mechanism project in 2020 which was a pretty successful design but as a starting point I looked back on some of those design decisions to see how I could improve. There were a lot of good things about the design, I think the motors were arranged pretty efficiently but there were certainly some unnecessarily long mechanical chains that could have been simplified like the lip actuators which work through a servo horn, pulling a ball socket, pulling a lever, pulling a 4 bar linkage so this time I tried to simplify as much as possible. Functionally, the new design was really similar. I have two big servos which open up the jaw, four separate pincers which attack the lips, two pairs of servos which position the corners of the lips, and with this combination I can make a lot of facial expressions and emulate basically all of the different phonemes or units of speech. More on that later. At some point in the past, I think I tried using threaded inserts and didn't like them. Presumably, I just used some nasty cheap ones, but recently I tried these chunky M4 ones with a flange and two opposing directions of fins to prevent them from pulling out after they've been sunk into position with a soldering iron. These ones actually work great. Another thing I tried to do with this design is to use shoulder bolts to make a more robust but also low friction pivot point, where previously I might have just used a bolt and had parts rotating around threads. Not ideal because the threads will wear away the 3D printed part. Shoulder bolts are only partially threaded with a larger, smooth diameter, which makes a really great pivot point. I also used a tiny washer between contacting 3D printed surfaces to keep friction to a minimum. I did have some issues with the design. Firstly, there was a little bit too much variation in the 3D printed parts, so some of the screws didn't have enough available depth to thread all the way in without clamping down on the pivot point, so I had to wind back the threads a little and use some thread locking compound to keep it together. The other issue with these shoulder bolts is that they're really, really expensive at something like £2 per screw, and I only realised after I finished the design, so unfortunately they are the most expensive part in the design at this stage. I do like this design a lot overall though, it feels tough. I also designed a mechanism for the tongue, since I think it's really important in emulating convincing speech, even if it is only a single degree of freedom. Unfortunately, there was a clash in my design that I only spotted after everything was printed, which meant that I blocked the motion of the jaw, and therefore I couldn't include the tongue in this prototype. You'll also notice these teeth I added. In my last design, I hand sculpted gums onto a 3D printed frame, but since 3D printing technology has improved so much, since then, I printed the whole thing on my Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon using different filament colours on the AMS, and I think they look really realistic, despite this shade of paint clearly being a little bit too light. My workflow to design these was to make a frame or sort of bounding box in Onshape with critical features like the interface with the rest of the mouth mechanism, and then imported these as a mesh into Blender, masked off the critical interfaces and used the sculpting workspace to make them realistic teeth. For some reason I wasn't really feeling the design as I was making it, somehow it didn't strike me as being realistic at all, but after printing I decided I really did like them actually. Sometimes you just need to see something in the real world to really appreciate it. I also put some magnets in, which was a super satisfying way to attach the teeth to the head, especially since last time I used some very cumbersome M3 screws which I remember cracking the sculpted gums. So, confession time. I used to think that I was the Kwisatz Haderach of CAD. I designed fast and eventually I realised, perhaps a little later than I'd care to admit, that the only reason I could go so fast is because my feature trees were a red and yellow hellscape. I designed recklessly and I treat parametric design in the same way that you would treat modelling in something like Blender, which was the first 3D software that I learned. Now as someone who has worked a lot in concept development and very early stage R&D, I think there is a time and place for recklessly cadding, but I've come to learn that the way to do robust, enduring, quality engineering is by using all of the features of parametric modelling to their full advantage. It's in the name after all. For me, making the switch to Onshape was a big part of my evolution into quote unquote proper design because it gives you the right tools and encourages a sustainable, efficient, long term workflow. With this design I had some quite heavyweight assemblies that I wanted to work on in isolation of the overall assembly, so we split the project into separate documents, mouth, eyes, etc, that contained part studios referencing master sketches in the main document, as well as referencing parameter tables that I could change in one place and see those changes reflected through all of my designs and fed back 
back into the overall assembly. Onshape is, in my opinion, the best CAD program for sharing and collaboration. As this project develops, I will be making all of the STL models, programs, electronics and instructions freely available, but as a gift for my patrons, I will be uploading all of my parameterized CAD files to an exclusive database, so not only will you guys be able to make a copy and either make changes in your own Onshape account or download the model, but you will also have access to the newest version I have at any point in time. Using the link below at onship.pro forward slash willcogley, you can get a free hobbyist license. And on the same link, companies and engineers can trial the professional plan free for six months. One thing I'd never thought about before was some kind of mechanism for eyebrows. Obviously an important part of expression and realism. I went very simple on the design here, using a similar four bar linkage as the lip mechanisms to raise and lower a guide component with a mostly linear motion. It's again very simple, but I decided to go with two points per brow for a total of four servos in the forehead. At the minute they're not doing much, but next I want to link them somehow or have them connected to a flexible surface. One video I saw a really long time ago, which really stuck with me over the years, is this animatronic mouth from the Dutch edition. They used flexible filament in a squiggly pattern to connect elements of their mouth organically while permitting natural deformation. So next I want to try something similar to make a smooth flexible surface to either support a silicone cover or just as a standalone kind of brow. The eye mechanism I used in this design is the snap fit one I showed a few months ago, with a few minor tweaks and improvements. I didn't like having to print the eyelids on their side, especially because the snap fit on there was one of the most prone to breaking, so I added a slight flat and aligned everything onto one face so that I would be able to print it laying down flat and I'd have a lot less issues. There are still some things I'd like to improve about it, but the main thing I experimented with this time was the PCB. You may remember I mentioned wanting to try directly integrating a microcontroller chip onto my own board rather than it being an Arduino shield, and so I downloaded Arduino's open source schematics for the nano board using the app Mega 328 and squished it together with a voltage regulator and servo power circuit I made in the last video. JLC PCB is my favourite PCB manufacturer and generous provider of free boards to myself, so I knew I'd be using them to manufacture and assemble this design. When designing PCBs in the past, I've found the most time consuming element to be component selection, finding or making footprints, and then formatting tables and bill of materials and placement information, so I sought to improve my workflow this time. My solution was to change EDA package and start using Easy EDA to make my designs. So in one application, I can search for a component, see how many are in stock, and when I'm happy, I can pull that in, and all of the info about that part is already there. And then when I want to order the board, I can export the manufacturing files, or I can just order directly from JLC PCB and not have to convert or process any of the data. So to build my Arduino Nano clone, all I had to do was import Arduino schematic into EasyEDA, link each component to ones which are already in the database, and I'd be good to go. So my new board arrived, and the first thing to do was to burn a bootloader, which is essentially firmware that allows me to use the board with a USB cable as if it's a regular Arduino. Luckily you can do this through the Arduino IDE using an Arduino Uno as a sort of conduit. It turned out that I hadn't wired up my USB port correctly, and so I still had to use the conduit Uno board to upload code to the new one but I did at least get the blink sketch working. I have some other power issues or something which I haven't fully diagnosed yet, so I wasn't able to fully control the eyes with this board prototype, but I think it was a great start and very cool achievement to have made my own Arduino. So to hold everything together and give some sort of structure to the head, I wanted to build a sort of frame. As I was designing everything, I had this royalty-free model of a head by Gadahoa on CG Trader, which I was using to reference the proportions. So the idea of this frame was to kind of connect everything together, but also to sort of define the limits of what would be the final head. I started to make this in CAD, but then I realized I didn't really know what I wanted yet. So I modeled only the attachment points, and then I brought these into Blender to try and figure out the shape quickly. Sometimes you can get stuck in one program, spinning your wheels trying to figure something out, and in those cases you might just need to take a step back, make some sketches, or try out a different approach. The first one I made was a lot more enclosing and had a lot more detail, but I think it was just a bit over the top and kind of helmety. I restarted and came up with this more minimalist version, and I think it's a lot better, and actually I think it won't be so hard to model in CAD when I come to convert it later. I didn't go too crazy with the electronics and programming at this stage, I'm using an Arduino Mega to control everything except the eyes, and then the eyes themselves run on a script which controls them randomly, but at some stage I will link the two boards. To make the move randomly, I just created some very simple code which picks a random action, either blink, blink and move to a random position, or just move, and then wait for a random amount of time. For how simple it looks, I think it looks surprisingly realistic. Would you agree? To pose the mouth, I just made some simple scripts to test functionality. 
One of my scripts uses potentiometers to pose different subsystems in the head individually, like the brows, jaws, etc. And then another cycles through random phonemes. I go into a lot more detail on how animation works for speech in my previous animatronic mouth video, but to put it simply, a phoneme is an element of speech, like a letter or sound, but as it relates to the shape of the mouth while the words have been spoken. For each of these phonemes, I programmed a set of servo positions and then wrote a script to pose the head into all of these different positions. So aside from the new tweaks I already mentioned, I think the next steps are to make this more lifelike. I previously shied away from using silicone skin because I've seen a lot of bad examples and sometimes I think it looks a bit like a floppy sock puppet, but I'm thinking that if it attaches in the right way, maybe using several magnets in the right places, and aesthetically if the design I go for is not so much hyper realism, but more like a robot designed to have enough human qualities to feel sympathetic, but not so far enough that it reaches the uncanny valley. I think that could look really cool. So I'm thinking of mixing rigid 3D printed elements with silicone in certain places to make a functional and aesthetic design. As always, a massive thank you to everyone who watches my videos and especially to my patrons who enable me to keep these projects coming. And if you want one of my free sticker packs and access to my online live CAD library in Onship, then consider joining the Patreon page. Thanks again guys and see you in the next video.